Greetings, folks. No wind today. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't walk underneath it. There's no wind today. So it's a good day. The motor has to come out to sort the problem with the wiring. I don't know why the LEDs aren't working. I have to sort that out. But really, it's all about the motor. So the chain has to come off. Then these things have to be undone. And then the motor will come out. Firstly, it has to be let down a tiny bit more. Not sure you can see there's a metal pole there holding up the there's a metal pole holding the tail up. Now that's on its side, the motor you can see is easily accessible. And the chain's a bit loose, but that's not loose to come off. That works, seems to work very well with that. If it works too tight, if it's too tight, it doesn't work. Here's the problem I need to fix. That cable where it's been eaten away when the chain came off. And obviously one side of the chain has worn away through the wire, so really it does need replacing. Uh, rust everywhere. This is Britain. Nice close-up look uh, at the double bearing, which is very good. Uh, I was looking for a better superlative there, but this is super strong and works perfectly. So thanks again for the donation from Steve who helped pay for that one. Because I was just going to use one on the bottom of the frame, uh, but then it was obvious that with all the weight, with a lot of the weight of this and the tail, and I mean, the weight is kind of a, a leverage equation as well. That tail might only weigh 15 kilos, but sticking out all that weight, the force it's putting down on the back end. Uh, the other thing which worked out really well, which looks a bit naff, but is really strong, are, the, are these struts, which again split the load and all the weight through these struts, then through this bearing, and they're super solid. These, these blades can come off. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at it again while, it, while it's uh, down. But this is super strong. If you've got to put anything like this on the top of a pole, I can really recommend using two of these industrial bearings. They are industrial bearings, really, so they're super strong. Uh, these are obviously like industrial pillow block bearings that are bolted down. Uh, this, the blades and the blade hub together weigh 25 kilos, so that's obviously a lot of uh, rotating mass when that gets really going. It does provide plenty of driving force. Uh, this gear is 18 tooth, this one here, which is running to an 18 tooth on the bike motor. And this is a 28 tooth, which I'm probably going to... I may consider connecting up now after the motor has been repaired. There's a few things I want to do to it with regards to the frame that holds the motor in. Uh, that needs some redesigning. And the this bracket that supports the motor needs some redesigning as well. So I've got to take the chain off, uh, which is a bit of a fiddle because you can only put it in from this side. From this side. So I've got to take the chain off, then uh, I've got to get rid of some of the clips and unscrew this and then the motor should come out. There's the magic link that we need to take out. It's the only one that's got any writing on it. Like I say, it has to be put in from this side so you can see the clip on top and then the actual link bit and you can see, anyway,
So that's the chain off and the wires from the turbine, from the motor, disconnected. I've still got this magnet here, look, which I keep all the very tiny bits attached to. Any extra stuff that I need is like a spare chain link there and the stuff I've just taken off. Sweet. So that is the motor successfully out. And I'm going to make a separate video replacing the interior cable on that. And we'll, we'll do that in the next video. Cheers.